Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I am inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus who has provided a way of escape from sin to righteousness, Amen. to be clothed with his righteousness by faith mm -hmm. through the power of God and the everlasting gospel. And I pray that to that end that uh, we all might be changed, even and those who are listening, those who are here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, we have been describing on chapter 10 of Revelation uh, this mighty angel. And we have seen in previous program that the mighty angel is nothing else but Jesus Christ himself. Yes. And we notice in chapter, uh, right there in verse 1, that he's going to, this mighty angel appear in this vision. John was looking up into a vision. And he said there was clothed with a cloud, right? Clothed with a cloud. Yeah. Um, Pastor Barry, I know that you told me that there are still few things that in relationship with the cloud, I mean, Jesus being, mm -hmm. you know, clothed with a cloud, right. that it will be in relationship to present truth for the same time. I want to bring out one thing, and that is simply that in Revelation chapter 10, when it says he's clothed with a cloud, I want you to remember that a cloud, first of all, in the Old Testament, a cloud, a pillar of cloud was used by day and a pillar of fire by night to lead Israel out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. The mighty angel coming down is also indicating a movement mm -hmm. where God is leading his people out of Egypt, out of the world's bondage and sin, and preparing to lead them through his met through the everlasting gospel to the preparation of Christ's second coming and ultimately to the ultimate heavenly Canaan land. All right. Right. This is for every Christian. It's not just for Seventh Day Adventists. It's for every Christian who believes the gospel. All right. Mm -hmm. We'll make it very plain. Mm -hmm. But I want you to notice something else, though. Go with me. He says he has a cloud, but now a cloud is connected to something else. And notice what the Bible says in Revelation chapter ten. He's clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head. Right. Notice it says a cloud and a what? Rainbow. rainbow was upon his head. So these are conjuncting together. So let's see. We know the cloud there was second coming, but let's see. What does a cloud represent with a rainbow? Go with me to Genesis 9, 13. Genesis chapter 9, verse 13. The Bible says, I do set my bow in the cloud, mm. and it shall be for a token of a covenant between what? Between me and the earth. Mm -hmm. All right? But now, notice very carefully that God says his bow is connected to a what? A covenant. Mm -hmm. Now, in the beginning, a covenant is an agreement. Mm -hmm. But this is an agreement that God will never destroy the earth again by a flood. But a covenant is also dealing with God's Ten Commandments. God's law has with it, a co God's law is a covenant mm -hmm. in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them on two tables of stone. God's covenant is his law. But is the law just a law without any, without, is it just justice? We're going to find that the rainbow is a symbol of mercy. When God placed his rainbow his bowl that's around his throne. Patrick, go to Revelation chapter two, chapter, um, I believe it's chapter five, oh, five yeah. and read about the rainbow, verse three and four, I believe it is, where it talks about the rainbow at the throne of God. I believe, is that chapter five? Revelation four, verse three. Four, verse three, yes, read that for me. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Now what's at the throne of God? A rainbow. Mm. But the rainbow, is the rainbow connected to the covenant? What is the covenant? 
the Ten Commandments. Right. So because you get mercy, did that mean you put away the Ten Commandments? No. Because you have mercy, mercy is given because your life has been changed. You receive mercy so you can walk in obedience to the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. But let's go a little bit closer so you can get more. Is where is the law of God? Is it just in our hearts? Is it just on tables of stone? Or where, did, where else is the law supposed to be? Go with me in your Bibles to Psalms 97 too. Psalms 97 too. The Bible says in Psalms 97 too, clouds and darkness are round about him. Mm -hmm. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Now, the word habitation means foundation. The foundation of God's throne is what? Righteousness and judgment. Mm -hmm. But now, wait a minute. What's at the throne already? A rainbow. Mm -hmm. But is the rainbow connected to God's covenant, his Ten Commandments? Yes. Mm -hmm. What is righteousness? The Bible says righteous and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. What is this righteousness that's the habitation or the foundation of his throne? Go with me to Psalms 119, 172. Mm -hmm. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. So all God's commandments are what? Righteousness. Where is God's commandments at originally? At his what? Throne. throne. And what's at the throne with the commandments? You have, mer you have a rainbow. A rainbow is considered a symbol of what? Mercy. mercy. So there is justice and there is mercy or there is righteousness and there is mercy mm. at the throne of God. Either one that the enemy will try to delete or take away from there, he will be successful. At the throne, right? Uh, that's right. At the throne, there's a perfect balance of justice right. and mercy, right. righteousness and truth. Look at Psalms 89, 14. Psalms 89, 14. Can you read that for us, Patrick? Okay. It, it says in Psalm 89, 14, mm -hmm. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Mercy and truth are before the face, meaning in the presence of God. Mm. What is mercy? The rainbow. But what else is with that mercy? A high priest. Mm -hmm. How do we know? Go with me to Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. And let's read that together. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Just want you to see this with me. In Hebrews 4, 14, the Bible says here, makes it very plain. Look at here. Hebrews 4, 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without what? Sin. Sin. Then it says, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of what? Grace. grace. grace that we may obtain what? Mercy. Mercy. And find grace to help in time of need. Hmm. Mm. So the Bible says that the throne of God mm. has the law and has the mercy, his mm. covenant. And the mercy is administered by our high priest yeah. who gives grace to help us in time of need. Praise the Lord. So in Revelation 10, when he talking about describing, giving the description of this rainbow, it's as making us know that this message is coming right from the throne of God. You Absolutely. can see that Revelation is given for our salvation mm. and that yes. uh, our time of need is when we're tempted. And he will give us power to overcome that temptation. Now, look at Ezekiel, because now when you see a bow in the cloud, when do y'all normally see a bow in the cloud? When do you normally see a bow in the cloud? Well, uh, when, after rain, right? After we rain. Saw, after yeah. what? Rain. After, after rain. what? Rain. <laughs> rain. Does God have anything to say about rain? Now, most people know it rained for 40 days and 40 nights in the days of Noah. By the way, uh, if it's raining and then the sun is coming out, you'll find the rainbow if you know where the sun is and look in the opposite direction. That's right. That's so right. <laughs> son of righteousness has with him mercy mm -hmm. and his mercy is seen in the rainbow of his covenant. A mercy of love and grace and truth and righteousness are all together. Mm -hmm. And peace is in that covenant as well. For the Bible says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, right. whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth thee. Right, right. But now look at here. Look for a moment in Ezekiel with me. And let's see what a rainbow represents when it's seen with the cloud. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 26. Ezekiel 1, 26. Notice what the Bible says again. In Ezekiel 1, 26, talking about the appearance of one like the Son of Man again. But notice very carefully what Ezekiel says here. He says here, 
And I'm going to start with verse 27. And I saw the color of amber and the appearance of fire round about and within. And from the appearance of his loins, even upward, from the appearance of his loins, even downward. And I saw, as it were, an appearance of fire, mm. and it had brightness round about. And as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud, mm. where? In the day of what? Rain. Rain. Hold on a minute. Ugh. God from a bow in the cloud also is a symbol of rain. Mm. Now we know physical rain falls when a bow is in a cloud, but this is talking about spiritual rain. Yeah. Amen. What spiritual rain falls when the bow is seen in the cloud? Meaning that this movement is going to be empowered by the power of God. Let's see what it is. What did God say? What is this? What is this? What is this moving of rain? Oh, what is rain or water represent in this case? Mm. If we were to go take a good look at the Bible, we will begin to see something very important. What did God say would come as rain? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 and 2. Let's go there for a moment. Then we go to Amen. John 7. But I want you to notice with me. Deuteronomy 32, verses 1 and 2. And uh, Patrick, you can read that one for me. Okay, Deuteronomy 32, 1 yes. and 2. Give mm -hmm. ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Mm -hmm. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. Wait a minute, what's coming as rain? My doctrine. His doctrine. So in the movement of the, the, in the Advent movement, what's coming down? The movement that Present it is described, mm -hmm. the movement that is described, that it is described in Revelation 10. That, that I just want to keep up, you know, yes. uh, over mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. on check that we're still in Revelation 10, yes. verse 1, yes. by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go ahead. The, the, rain. Move, the, the rain that's coming down is not literal rain. Mm. It's a spiritual. But the mighty angel comes down, he brings with him rain. Mm. What type of rain? He's bringing spiritual rain, but how do we, how can we recognize it? Look what it says. He says, my doctrine shall drop as rain. So with this, with the mighty angel coming down, what's coming down? Doctrine. Mm. What type of doctrine? Second coming of Christ. Mm. What type of doctrine? The everlasting gospel. What type of doctrine? Salvation, righteousness. Uh, and, the and, Sabbath, and the, the seventh day Sabbath. We're going to see the seventh day <laughs> Sabbath in this as well. Yeah. But I, and because how do we know? Look what the Bible says. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, mm -hmm. and my speech shall distill as the what? Dew, of, as the rain upon the tender herbs, and as the showers upon the grass. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Patrick. Well, this rain, like you said, is not mm -hmm. a physical rain, but no. it, it's, does the, it's life giving like rain is, mm -hmm. along with the sun. And it's falling upon our minds and our hearts. But now how is this rain coming? Look at Isaiah 55 and read verses 6 through 11 for a moment. Okay. Isaiah 55 and uh, read verse, uh, especially verse 11. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent mm -hmm. it. Watch this. This is important too. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. Yes, we're talking about rain, uh, not uh, physical rain, but spiritual rain. First, Isaiah 55, 10, we were reading. Mm -hmm. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. 
the Bible shows that God's word comes down as rain. Mm -hmm. And this rain is a symbol, it symbolized when the bow is in the cloud in the day of rain. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is showing that on the great Advent movement that we're reading about in Revelation chapter 10, the movement will start by the, uh, by the revival of the study of God's word in doctrine and in especially Bible prophecy. Let me ask you, is that a coincidence? No. But in a time, in a time when doctrines has been trying to be put it on the side. Yeah. Now God says, no, 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 no. Now I'm going to raise up a movement to remind this rebellious humanity that my doctrines are must be going, must be taught throughout the land. Yes, Patrick. And this was not a coincidence either, because remember this angel was coming down after the sixth trumpet. Right. after 1840, and uh, God's people had not had a Bible through the centuries of the Dark Ages, and, but it was the uh, result of the Reformation that returned the Bible to the people. Mm. And then when God's people saw that the Pope had been taken captive in 1798, mm -hmm. they started studying especially the doctrine found in Daniel chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 9, and uh, receiving more light on what Christ was doing in the heavenly sanctuary. Yes, we study on previous under the sixth trumpet about the Islamic movement, that the, the time, the dark ages of the papacy. And they're surrendering their power to the Christian nations. One of the reasons why the ages were so dark is because the people had no understanding of the Bible nor of sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. so, so the land was dry of yes. drive of the famine, word of God. There was a famine in the land. The famine in the Not land. Not a famine yeah. of bread nor thirst of water, but for right. hearing the word of God or having the word of God at right. that time. And that's one of the reasons why the papacy increased in power and riches during that period. Wow. Because they kept the people in ignorance and the people looked to the priests and the, pre and the, and the prelates and the and the so-called cardinals for the mm -hmm. answers, and then the Pope had the final word. Mm -hmm. And this is what caused the people to sit in darkness wow. while the word of God was chained to a convent. It was through that chained convent of the word of God that Luther began to find in, the scriptures. In a language and, no one knew. And the language no one knew was hidden in dead languages like in Latin at that time. Mm -hmm. And here the Bible, the Great Reformation brings about the Gutenberg press and they began to translate the Bible into mm -hmm. the language of the cotton people and, and the common people. So literally the fulfillment of this movement described in chapter 10 of Revelation, it's been it literally been happening. Yes. Because the Bible has been spreading. Even nowadays, but, the, 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 the Word of God is found in electronically in books, through uh, television, national radio, so on and so on and so on. Internet, mm -hmm. wow. I want to make sure you understand that rain is something that God promised to pour out. Mm -hmm. But pouring out rain is also, you can say, like pour out water. Mm -hmm. So we, call, we find that water or rain represents, in this case, in the context, God's Word, correct? Mm -hmm. And we know that it's going to rain what? Doctrine. Uh, what does the Bible say in 2 Timothy 3.16 about the scriptures? Want to yeah, make sure you get it. Right. So you can get the point. Right. As we talk about this oh, yeah. movement, because you're, you're bringing out a good point. We need to know that the, the Reformation started because they were translating the scriptures mm. into the language of the common people. And not only translating it, but putting it on the hands and put in the of hands the people. And putting it the hands of people. That's right. While the church, the popular church, Roman Catholicism was saying, no, no, no. The Bible should be only for the clergy. And, and I mean, can people think why? Why they were so uh, uh, protective, uh, so careful that the Bible should not go on the hands of the laity? Because wow. if the laity <laughs> began to read, they oh, would begin to question the priest, yeah, yeah. and the priest believed they had ultimate authority. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So go ahead and read Second Timothy, please. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. So when in reality, when we say we don't want to really have doctrine anymore, what we're really saying is we don't want, to, we don't want the Bible right. teaching us doctrine. We want to ignore Bible doctrine. Do you, want to know, do you want to know why? Because traditions wants to be in place of the doctrines. And now, remember. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Right. Now, uh, can, can I say something? Mm -hmm. Water also is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Yes, and right? we're gonna, yeah, we want to point that out. And, and right. I was going to have Patrick read that in Matthew chapter 7. Okay. John, uh, chapter, John 7? chapter 7, verses uh, 37 to 30, uh, 38. 40, 30 yeah. 39. Yeah. Okay. 
John 7? Yeah. Uh-huh. Verse 38. Right. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. So notice very carefully, this is talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So rain is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, verse 8, the Bible said, But ye shall receive power mm -hmm. after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now notice very carefully, then that rain that's coming down that Jesus is going to bring is a raining, not of feelings and just music. Mm -hmm. It's a raining of doctrine. It's a raining of understanding prophecy. It's a raining of God showering the world with a period, with understanding of his word, which is also righteousness. Mm -hmm. Look what's here in Hosea 10, 12. In Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible says, stay to yourselves in righteous say to your so to yourselves in righteousness it says reap in mercy break up the fallow ground for it is time to seek the lord mm. till he come and rain what righteousness mm. upon you mm. when you say righteousness uh, of the word of god saying that he was going to bring righteousness upon the people uh, it, it should come to our mind again psalms 119 172 Yes. All thy commandments are righteousness. Why did I say, if I ask you, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you now. Uh -huh. Break up the fallow ground in our minds <laughs> and in our hearts. Right, because right. God wants to rain righteousness. But let's go one more step. I, I have a question yeah, before, ahead, before go you go. Go ahead. I know. Can you name, for the sake of, you know, people, so many people across the land and in, in Europe, in some other countries, uh, uh, go, uh, been watching this program. Um, this, can you name at least two main doctrines that because of the dark ages, because of the suppression of the papacy, you know, of taking the Bible away from the people, and, and also the, 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 the movement that we were studying earlier, Islamic movement going out, can you name two at least of the doctrines that almost were completely Forgotten during that time. During the Dark Ages? Yeah. One was the Sabbath. One was the Sabbath. The and, true seven day Sabbath. Yes. And okay. I, I would say the other one was the truth about the state of the dead. Amen. Good, mm -hmm. good, good. Uh, I mean, why did I bring this? Because as I look at, yes, we know uh, there are many other teachings that are not, that are not truth. Another, okay, out there. I, I, but those two doctrines. They're the key doctrines for our time. Mm -hmm. Not only for our time, throughout all the times. Because under the deception of the state of the death and the deception of the child, as somebody put it, the child of the papacy, which is this Sunday sacredness. And, and I don't say it. We, we read it before Cardinal Gibbons on, on his book. Um, what is the title? The faith of our father, he mentioned very clearly Cardinal Gibbons on this book on page 77, he said it about 100 years ago that you can look from Genesis to Revelation and you are not going to find not even one line in the Bible that will affirm or will say that the sanctity of Saturday had been transferred to Sunday. That was a Catholic cardinal mm -hmm. saying that. We have been reading and putting a national paper like a USA Today, New York Times, LA Times, and so on and so on. This is the, one of the papers that we've been putting, the York, New York Times. And I also got a copy around there of the USA Today. Well, we have been offering a thousand dollar. Yes. We can still offer a thousand dollar for one Bible verse from the Bible, from the King James, that will say that the, you know, the solemnity or the sanctity of this Saturday had been transferred to by Sunday or to Sunday, either by Jesus or the Apostle. Obviously, nobody have come up to claim this, but yes, there was a drought of rain 
of pure doctrines during the dark age. But God on his mercy <coughs> brought up this mighty angel, which is Jesus himself, coming out, raising up a movement. And, 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 and by the way, okay. this movement mm -hmm. was made up at the beginning um, by whom? Help me out. You, you're two, two uh, students of prophecy and history. According to the Bible, Jesus started the movement. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, because it was Jesus himself. Yes, yes. Carpenter. But, but car carpenter. No, but, but I'm talking about now the, the Advent movement the, the, in the 18th century, mm -hmm. 19th century. Yeah, it was made up of people from, from every, every religion. Denom every religion, every denomination. Baptist. In America Methodist, and in Europe. Catholic, even. Uh -huh. There was a Catholic priest in South yes. America. You had even a Jesuit priest in <laughs> that name of Lacunza who Lacun was a convert. Ray who had become a converted Christian that was writing under Jewish two right. people. So God raised up this movement out of, and we need to clarify this all, you know, often in our program, because there is a great prejudice out there. Yes. So the enemy is putting in so much garbage in there in the internet about the Seventh-day Adventist movement. They think that Seventh-day Adventist first, many people think that Seventh-day Adventist is only the, General Conference from Silver Spring, Maryland. Some people believe that. No. The Seventh day Adventists, do you know that a lot of good Christians out there are Seventh day Adventists, but they don't know? Because they believe in the advent of Christ that make them Adventists, and they also believe, they're starting to believe the Seven day Sabbath. How did I know? Because we're getting phone calls, we're sending this material out all the time. And people are sending, I have had the privilege to be preaching in churches, ex-Baptist churches, ex-Evangelical churches, not only in America, outside of America. And I see the movement shower. The yes. rain is going to keep falling. Yes. Because it's a movement of Christ coming very soon. And it needs to have a people prepared. I, I, I give you five seconds. When this angel came down, the Sabbath was relatively unknown. It was, but was uh, made up of those who were keeping Sunday. I mean, so I, I know my time is up. So in the meantime, I, I need to remind you, our dear friends, Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are...